Hey guys, it's time to see what's going on with the markets, so let's look at the charts. I was expecting in the previous video for this move to just be a bounce in our larger downtrends, which was recently confirmed when we put in a lower low, despite some people asserting that the downtrend is over. These types of moves are incredibly common in Bitcoin. You have what at first seems like a higher high, but only relative to insignificant chop in the price action, not the true top. So when we're looking at the big picture, we're still technically putting in lower highs and lower lows as of right now. However, Bitcoin is doing this in a very methodical and controlled fashion in a strong overall bull market, which means that I'm not worried at all. As usual, let's start with the power law indicators. The log lock graph clearly shows us how Bitcoin is struggling to get a foothold on top of our median power law line. Could it be because we arrived in this area just a little bit too soon? Absolutely. As you can see, these vertical lines indicate Bitcoin halvings. The reason why the in-between periods look shorter and shorter is because this is a log lock chart and time is squeezed together, just like price. Bitcoin typically breaks the median power law line well after the halving. This time, our first test of it came even before the halving took place. It's no wonder then that we're struggling to break above it for the second time this cycle. However, you can see that cracks are starting to form in the resistance, as evidenced by us staying above it for longer periods of time during the last attempt. I believe the third time is going to be the charm, so once we break above this area the next time, we will have no meaningful resistance until our top projection at around 200k. Now to the Bitcoin power lock clock. We're now at 6 minutes past 9 o'clock. Bitcoin's price action is still bending back toward the average to build up some energy for the next large move. Now to the detrended oscillator. Relative to trend, price and mean are all showing us the same thing. We're still in the dark yellow area and building up some energy before we can sustainably reach the orange euphoria area where we have always stayed for more than a year throughout the late stages of the bull market and early stages of the bear market. Finally, the local Hearst exponent shows us that we might be starting to slow down as we get closer and closer to the peak of the wave. If we're currently experiencing a prolonged reaccumulation area, then the next bottom will likely line up with an amazing entry point. Now let's take a closer look at Bitcoin's price action using traditional TA on the weekly time frame. RSI is still cooling down and no longer overbought. The stochastic RSI is still stuck halfway down to the bottom. The bulls are hoping for the MACD lines not to cross despite the weakening of the histogram. The correction so far is not even close to the 20 week moving average, which we have crossed below multiple times in this bull market. So the bulls are hoping for a scenario like this, where the recent upthrust would just be the midway point of a larger uptrend without retesting the moving average. However, I find this scenario to be a bit less likely. Our last reaccumulation area bounced off the 50 week moving average which is currently approaching the previous top at around 73k, which would act as very strong support. This is what I would see as the worst case scenario, unless something really bad happens to the markets. However, let's get back to the here and now and see what's going on in the daily chart. We just printed this green doji with a strong demand wick to the downside, which could definitely indicate more bullishness in the coming days. We just need to see whether this move will be another failed bounce or an actual challenge to the all-time high. Now to the S&P. In my last video, I suspected that we might be forming a head and shoulders pattern, which did confirm by breaking down with the only caveat being that it printed a second smaller shoulder before doing it. This is quite common. Our breakdown from the neckline also filled this important gap over here. The technical target for the pattern would bring us closer to the 200 day moving average, but the technical target is not always reached. Now back to Bitcoin. When looking at the macro picture, what we're doing right now is very healthy. This market cycle is looking pretty unique, however, because the price growth looks a lot more methodical. 
almost like a stair-step pattern where we have bursts of activity followed by months upon months of boring consolidation before the next up move. While we know that Bitcoin on the whole beautifully follows a power law, we also know that Bitcoin typically becomes parabolic for short periods of time toward the ends of bull markets, before returning to the power law again. It seems like this bull market is looking a bit more linear, at least so far. Maybe this is a sign of Bitcoin maturing as an asset. However, if we do end up creating another reaccumulation area over here, it could at least leave us some room for a slightly more parabolic end to the bull market, which would be nice to see. Otherwise, the market would probably look more like our last cycle by printing a double top or something. So far, the lowest price reached was 89k, so my prediction of having a high likelihood of the 80s being reached is technically already true and I got another small order filled in that region. I'm still accumulating and laddering into this dip. If we end up going higher sooner than expected, I will adjust my strategy accordingly. One thing's for sure, I'm not selling any of my Bitcoin before the next cycle top. We have to see what the Fed will do and how the markets will react to the Fed. It seems to me that the current sentiment is quite bearish and everybody is predicting a large recession immediately. I still don't share this view and think that any correction will be relatively short-lived. Historically, Bitcoin has performed quite poorly in the first quarter of the year, especially during downtrends. March in particular has been the worst month on average. So if we do end up correcting some more, it could just do what it did in the previous consolidation areas before getting our euphoric finale. If you would like to support our work, consider subscribing to our incredible Lux Algo indicators for TradingView. The process is very simple and LuxAlgo grants automatic access to your account. If you need any help, just message me in our Telegram group or on X. We also have a great merch store at bitposidonstore.com with some awesome designs and that is another way to support our work. This is Saverio speaking and as always, thanks for watching.